it seemed like we weren't going to have a really smooth time with this chip, and the problems are going to continue. Well, kind of like Seinfeld here is saying hello to Newman, we were saying hello to nothing. We know that we initially had no clock, and obviously nothing worked. But we double-checked under the microscope, then the clock is connected, and we tried to see if there were any shorts or something like that, and we didn't have anything. So how come it's as if the chip doesn't exist? Well, there are some things that are different now. We started to play with the bootstraps. We did start to see some activity from the chip. For example, we can see that it is trying to fetch code from the MMSPI, which it wasn't doing before. We weren't even able to do that. And that made sense because we didn't have a clock. Well, now we do, I guess, have a clock. And we see that the chip is trying to do something. There are things that are toggling up and down. But the UART doesn't work. And UART is a really, really simple protocol. It's such a slow interface that lowering the frequency wouldn't help. And we've had this specific IP. We put it on many different chips before. It always worked. So it's not a logic bug. Well, if it's not a bug and it's not the frequency, could it be a hold violation? Let's go back to our static timing analysis basics. Remember what max delay is set up. Uh, problems. The data arrives at the capture register later than at the uh, later than the following clock edge. So if we have our launch register here, we have a bunch of combinational logic over here, and we have our capture register, and we have the clock. We have some skew on the way between the launch clock and the capture clock. So what happens is that we have our slow um, launch path, and we have our uh, fast, too fast kind of clock period. So that's the T over here plus the skew, the positive skew that we have is going to be larger than, you know, this uh, delay that's going to go through the register, the TCQ, and the, the delay of the logic, and the setup time of this register, plus all kinds of margins that we need to take due to different things like on-chip variation and so forth. So the possible reasons that we could have a, a max delay a setup violation is because our chip is uh, slow, you know, it's a slow corner, so maybe this is a really long delay. Um, maybe we're uh, acting at too high a frequency. Well, that's not going to be the case with the UART. Or maybe we have negative skew. So if this is, this um, triangle is the other way, we're going to have a big minus over here, and that could disrupt our uh, inequality over here. Um, what is the solution for that? So it's lowering the clock frequency. And obviously, we said that that is not our problem with the UART, which is really a simple and slow interface. What about hold, min delay? Well, in that case, the data arrives at the capture register before the same clock edge. So in this case, we actually have a really fast kind of short path. And we want to make sure that this short path, which is just the TCQ of the register plus the T logic of the combinational logic, is going to be larger than the time it actually takes for the clock to arrive at the, at the capture register. So because we have this skew over here and because we have some hold constraint on the register, we want to make sure that that is going to take longer than it takes to um, for, for the data to propagate through the first register and get sampled on the wrong clock edge without um, waiting to the next clock edge. So that's our problem in hold. And what are the reasons for hold when we have a fast corner? So we have an even shorter delay through this really short delay as it is of the green line over here. And it could be because we have a large positive skew, which is going to make this delta skew large. And in that case, we're not going to meet the inequality. So that's really a best case or a really fast type of a chip um, can cause this problem. And so what are the solutions? Well, I've told you this uh, before in different kind of classes that re really, if we have a hold violation, we're going to have to throw away the chip. But are we going to throw away the chip that we just put in so much effort and money into? Well, maybe we can slow it down. Slowing it down, maybe we'll turn it from a fast corner into actually a longer delay, and maybe that'll help things. So how can we make the chip slower? Well, remember that we talk about PVT, process, voltage, and temperature. That's kind of the corner of the chip. Well, process, we probably have a typical chip. We could try several different chips, but um, considering, you know, this is on some sort of a shuttle, they probably came from the same wafer. They're not going to have that big a difference uh, between them. We're not going to have one fast, fast chip and one slow, slow chip. Maybe temperature, well, we do have an oven in our lab. We could heat it up, but uh, or we could cool it down and see what happens. Remember temperature inversion? Sometimes these things aren't clear which is the right corner to put it in. But it's easier to just kind of change the voltage. That's pretty easy. We can just lower the voltage that we give to our chip. Okay, 
So we started to slightly lower VDD and something started to happen. We all of a sudden can perform writes to several addresses from the UART and successfully read them back. So we weren't able to boot up the chip, but we could write a certain pattern to a certain address, read it back, and we got the right data back. So that is interesting. Something is working. Something is alive. What is wrong here? It does look like something that has to do with hold. Well, when we write to certain addresses, we read back dead beef. What is this poor cow? What happened to him? Well, what is dead beef? Dead beef is a hexa number, right? A, B, C, D, E, F. That's all the letters we use here. Those are hexa characters. So we can write some sort of a funny type of a word, um, a 32-bit hexa word that means that something's wrong, right? Dead beef sounds like something wrong. Um, it means that something isn't right. So when Pulpenix actually gives us back dead beef, it means that we're trying to access an illegal address. But that means that something is working. We're reading the correct thing. We did expect to read out dead beef we, we, uh, if something was wrong, if we were accessing an illegal address. So maybe we're either writing something wrong or, or when we um, ask for an address, we're getting to the, the wrong address. There must be something wrong in the way that we're accessing the chip. Well, maybe we change the memory map. Remember what a memory map is? When we design a chip, we give each device a region of addresses. So we, um, use, we, we relate to each device as memory. So the UART, for example, is memory, or uh, the SPI is memory. Everything is memory. All the different registers inside are just a bunch of memory that we can read and write to. Okay, These are hard-coded in the chip. So we actually write in our RTL, you know, a comparator that um, is synthesized with the hardware. And according to the memory map that we synthesize, it's hard-coded. We actually have a comparator that sees if we're reading or writing to that device, to that um, range of addresses. Okay, And this is another potential point of failure because really these things are defined manually. We do it in an Excel sheet. Sometimes you have a script or something that helps you. But really it's something that's done by a person, not by some sort of a special machine. And it's not something that's really verified other than in all types of simulations. Okay, All kinds of gate level type simulations can really check this out. Well, no, actually the memory map here was exactly the same as in Bianca. And Bianca worked perfectly, so it couldn't be that was a problem. In fact, when we ran gate level simulations of an entire boot sequence through the UART, we see that everything is okay. And that sequence puts out this nice picture of a lupulus over here, of a wolf. So that wasn't it. So it really, really does look like we have a hold violation on the chip. Let's further reduce the, volt uh, the voltage. More addresses are starting to work. Well, we continue turning around that little screw over there on, you know, on the resistor next to the LDO, and we get lower addresses in it, uh, 670 millivolts, where our VDD is 800 millivolts. So we removed you know, 130 millivolts from the VDD, and guess what? We get a nice old hello world. Okay, so in uh, on the chip, we get hello lupulus and a nice R2-D2 and C3PO over here in ASCII art. Okay, but that can't be because obviously hold is not a single point of failure, right? It's something that we check in our STA checks. It's something that we check with our, our tools, and we checked it before a tape out. Well, let's look at the nice timing debugger that we're provided by um, Cadence and Ovis, and we see that the hold kind of uh, histogram shows that everything is green. That means that we have positive skew on everything in the uh, hold uh, violation check. Um, the worst UART path? It's crazy. It has over 500 picoseconds of slack, of positive slack. That's a big margin. It's not something that's usually going to be caused by, you know, just going to a different corner or something like that. So how could it be that we have a hold violation? What did we miss? What are we missing? Well, are we sure that we checked all the corners? Well, didn't we just say that we did? Um, worst case setup is the slow corner, right? And worst case hold is the best case, the fast corner. Right? That's what we saw before when we were discussing the timing thing. That's the kind of worst case, best case type of, a, of an approach that we usually use to, um, to verify you know, our static timing analysis. Yeah, but at nanoscale technologies, you know, things get weird. During sign-off, you have to check hold at all corners, and there are a lot of them. Remember the RC best, RC worst, C best, C worst, all the back-end corners, the metal corners? And you also have to check hold at the slow corners and the typical corners and so forth. 
and it turns out we didn't exactly check all of those corners. And so when we do, uh-oh, we do have some red. We do have some hold violations. But the UART paths are within the uncertainty margins. So that doesn't really make sense. No, 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 no. When I said corners, I mean all, all corners. We even have to check a typical corner to see that it meets hold. And yeah, look what happens when we go to a typical, typical corner over here. What we see is that we have a path going through the UART that has a negative slack. It's only a 22 picosecond negative slack, but that's enough, I guess, to uh, make hold, you know, violate our chip. So hold is real. So everything I taught you about in my DVD class about, you know, the corner crisis and MMMC and so forth, yes, you do have to check all corners, all corners.